Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rohan and today we're going to be taking a look at how to film miniatures and how to make small things appear larger than they are. Let's get to it. What? Right, I'm going to be breaking this down into three segments. The set, the filming and the editing. But before that, I want to show you what gear I use to film this entire thing. I have my camera, tripod, light stand, RGB light, penny board, and my gimbal. All of which is completely optional by the way, because the real magic comes when you make the best use of what you have right now. Okay, let's begin with the set. I wanted the set to look like some cyberwave city at night with all the RGB lights and purple hues. So I got a few of these LED strip lights. These are the ones commonly used to decorate your room and I wanted to use them as my track. I didn't want one big light to light up the entire track, otherwise it would have made the cars look smaller. So I used the strips as the only light source. This is how the entire track looks like. It's really short and in reality just takes about 40 seconds to go through with the RC cars. It starts from my room and then there's this long straight down the corridor, under the sofa, then to this jump here and then to this big loop where they fly off to the finish line. So the interesting thing about building the set was the limitations. As I was coming up with the idea, Circuit Breaker had already started, and I was left with only about 10 meters of LED strips. The entire track needed about 40 to 60 meters of LED strips. So I had to decide on which part I should film first, build that, film it, and then move on to the next set. I also wanted a part where the cars go through some sort of tunnel, so I built one out of cardboard, and I fitted the LED strips inside to make it pop. The big loop is also made out of cardboard. Took me three days to build that shit. Audi, if you need a place to test your cars, call me. Right, next we have the filming. And this was a lot more complicated than I anticipated. Ideally, to make a car look bigger than it actually is, you're gonna want to shoot from as low to the ground as possible. And with a normal car, it's easy. But with this kind of stuff, you're gonna have to break your back for it. So for tracking shots like these, I tied my tripod to my penny board and hung my camera as low to the ground as possible and moved the whole thing with my feet. This turned out damn well. And to be honest, you don't even need a tripod or gimbal for this. Get some duct tape and your phone and you're good to go. One big tip I'll give you is to close down your aperture to like f8 or something. This is because you want to have the whole car or object in focus. To the human eye, smaller objects close to the eye are going to have depth of view or background blur. Those of which tell the brain that yeah, this is a small object. You don't really want that for your car. So keep everything in focus. And consequently, you're going to have to make your lighting brighter. The movement of the cars had to be solid. It was difficult to replicate the inertia of a real car using these small and lightweight cars because they only had one speed setting and for some reason the Audi was always faster than the Truno. For more obvious reasons actually. So instead of driving them with the remote control, I had to resort to using this. Fishing light. I duct taped it to the car and dragged them along while recording so as to get the speed that was necessary. I really like this shot because I actually crashed the cars into the camera but it looked like they were drifting or something, so I used this in the end. All the jumping scenes had, had the cast held by fishing line as well. So there was like fishing line here, I erased this in post, and like here also. The good thing about fishing line is that it's translucent. So you can leave it in while editing and people probably won't notice. This shot through the tunnel was fun as well. The whole skateboard and camera setup was too big to fit through the tunnel. So what I did was I dismantled the Audi, I stuck the camera on top and I drove the car through the tunnel. That's it. But I only have two hands and I want to give a big thank you to my family for helping me drive the car sometimes and being very patient with my incessant retakes. Now let's talk about the edit. The most important thing when it comes to shooting these smaller objects is not what editing software you're using, not what computer you're using and definitely not what camera you're using. It's your creativity for sound. I cannot stress how important sound design is and this is so so important and often very overlooked. The reason why big things feel big is because we as humans innately understand the weight and the kind of big bassy sounds that they make. So it's really important that we mix high quality real car sounds with these smaller cars to make them feel real. Websites like zapsplat.com and freesound.org are great places to find high quality free audio. This 1.5 minute video itself contains about 150 sound effects. If your editing software has a surround sound option, use it to your advantage and match the direction of the sound with where the object is in the frame. It's not something that people will necessarily notice on the first glance, but they will feel it and it's what will make your work stand out from the rest. Get creative with your sounds and don't be afraid to add random sound effects and see if it works for your edit. For example, the Audi RS5's voice is really high pitched and can pierce your ears. So I added a BMW M5's deep voice to make it more bassy. B 
be sure to use risers and whooshes in tandem with the car's motion so that they will add more tension and they can also add to the weight of the car. Regarding the visuals, I highly suggest you do a storyboard before the entire production so that you can get an idea of what the edit is going to be like before you even edit. A lot of times I see filmmakers randomly shooting clips hoping that it will look good in the edit. Yes, it will if you're great at it, but it will take a lot of time. Doing a storyboard will make your editing feel like a puzzle piece that you know the answer to. Just pyak 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 and you're done. By the way, there was no color grading done to this footage. At max, I just added in some contrast and some sharpening as well as some noise reduction. I used Make Art Now's custom low light picture profile for my camera and it worked great. I want to end off by saying that you don't need fancy gear to do all this kind of stuff. I'll be honest, I would have shot the whole thing on my phone because it's much more compact and easier to work with. I just use a camera because I have one and why not. Small dumb projects like these that get my hands dirty are the ones that really stretch my creativity. And this is what I encourage you to do this circuit breaker. It doesn't matter whether you're productive or not, but I think staying creative is because you don't want your brain to go dead. Do something new and try to bring your outside life home. If you think something can't be done, then do it because there's no better time than now. All right, that's it for now, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you enjoyed watching me play with my toy cars. I know I've been obsessing over this lately, but I guess that's what this channel is all about. I just want to talk about shit that I like. Uh, so thanks for taking interest in this, and thank you for watching. See ya, champs.